I love Dragon Frame. Uh, Dragon Frame is by far the best software I've found for shooting stop motions. There's some other options out there that you can get specifically for Mac. So I shoot on Macs. Um, you can get some other software specifically for Macs that are cheaper, uh, but I don't think they're quite as good. Uh, Dragon Frame, in my, in my opinion, not that expensive. For what it does, it's actually quite cheap. The daunting thing with Dragon Frame is that there's a lot that you can do and a lot that they don't really tell you about. So if you go on the Dragon Frame's website, they do have some video tutorials. However, most of them are very old and they're not great. So when I first started using Dragon Frame, I had to figure it out completely on my own. I, I just dove in and learned. And as I've gone on, I've learned some more of the nuanced tricks and things that you can do with Dragon Frame that make your life so much easier. Today isn't going to be that. I am going to come around and do some more specific videos on different aspects of Dragon Frame because so much of what it offers really deserves its own video to explain how to utilize it best, how to even do it at all. But what I do want to do in this video is get you started with Dragon Frame because that was possibly the hardest bit when I first started doing it was just understanding it and how to even get started with it. It's not going to be massively in depth. It is going to be, here's how you set up a scene. Here's how you set up your camera. These are what different things do. It's going to be enough to get you to shoot your first stop motion and that's what you want to do. Uh, if you want, I also stream a lot of my shoots, a lot of my stop motions and a lot of my editing over on Twitch. You can check it out here. And yeah, let's dive into Dragon Frame and show you what to do. Okay, so when you open up Dragon Frame, you're presented with this. Obviously this is a little bit different. I've got two, two different stop motions I was shooting here uh, previously. <clears throat> But this is, this is what you see when you first open it up. You can either create a new scene or open up a previous scene. Assuming you've not used it before, uh, we're gonna go to new scene and it's gonna give you a couple of options. So when you open up, when you click new scene, it brings this up. The one downside I will say straight off the bat is they don't give you enough characters for your title. I don't know why, but you are literally limited to five characters. Don't know why. Um, it's been a little bit of an issue for me, if I'm honest, because I've shot some stop motions that have very similar names or of a product for two different companies that are basically the same. And I've had to get a little bit creative with what I was calling things. But yeah, for whatever reason, you get five characters. If you're doing something a little bit more complex, you have scene numbers, which we will go into that in another video because breaking down your stop motions into different scenes is quite useful. And then you have takes. Uh, again, that's going to be more down the road for different takes that you want to do. So you may have messed up one, you're going to do take two. You might have messed it up again, do take three. Don't really worry about that. The last thing over here is your frame rate. I'll tell you now, don't worry too much about this because you can change this in the scene when you create it as well. So what it's doing is it's giving you the option to set your frame right here and it's gonna set it in Dragon Frame when it opens up. But at any time you're shooting, you can change it. So don't feel like this is set in stone when you set it here. There's been many a times when I've been shooting at 12 frames a second and halfway through the animation, I've been like, nah, you know, this actually probably needs to be a little bit slower. I'll go six frames a second and you can change it and see what that looks like. We'll come to that in a second. But what I'm going to show you is one that I've already created to show you some of the features of Dragon Frame. So this is what you do. You would, you would click OK. It would ask you where you want to save it and off you go. I'm going to open up a previous one. Okay, so once we get Dragon Frame open, this is kind of what you'll see. What you're seeing right now is actually one of the images that's already been taken. 
and the reason is because I'm currently using the camera to shoot this. <laughs> if I were to put it on the live view of the camera, it stops the recording of the video that you are watching right now. So I can show you the live view, but that's not important actually. What is important is to walk you through the overview, the layout of Dragon Frame. This here, this will always be either your live view, and if it's your live view, it will have a red box around this image. So you'll always know this is what your camera is currently seeing if you see a red box around this. Down here is your frame number. You can just drag this back to the beginning. Okay, so you see frame one. This is very useful for when you're shooting an animation because down here in this corner here, this shows you the frames per second that you set. You can change this. You can just click on it. You can change it to whatever you want. The two that I typically shoot in are 12 and six. But if you just leave it, it's at 12 frames a second. When you're shooting your stop motion, it's very helpful to look at your frames here because then you'll know, right, I've shot 12 frames. That is one second of video. Another very important thing that you're gonna see down in the bottom of the panel of Dragon Frame is this. So right here, these are your overlays for your aspect ratio. If you're shooting a standard 16 by nine, that is what Dragon Frame will by default show you is a 16 by nine crop of your image. You can increase or decrease the opacity of that crop here. So as you see, if I turn it down, this is the straight out of camera uncropped version of the image. Now I should tell you, Dragon Frame does not crop the image. The image that Dragon Frame takes will be this image, but it's giving you the option to view what it will look like as 16 by nine. You can change this. That will be another video though, because that's there's so much you can do with that. But this is where you would see, and sometimes it is useful to lower this opacity a little bit. So you can see when things are coming into frame, but they're not coming into the crop. And that's quite useful when you're shooting some animations. So this is the aspect ratio. Down here, this is arguably <laughs> one of the most important buttons in Dragon Frame, and they don't tell you about it at all. For me, I shoot a lot of my stop motions with flash lights as opposed to continuous lighting. It depends on what it is I'm shooting but I do shoot a lot with flash. And this button is very important to me because if you can see when I hover over it, it says use high resolution stills for preview. I don't know how Dragon Frame does this, but if you don't click that button and you're shooting with flash, when you go back and look at an image that's been taken by your camera, it will be the image without the lighting. Honestly, I have no idea how that happens, but that's the way it is. So you click on this and you can see instantly the image with flash. So this was a stop motion I shot using flash as opposed to continuous lighting. That is the most, one of the most important buttons within Dragon Frame, for me at least, because now you can see the difference. But you see, if I turn it off, I honestly don't know how Dragon Frame has a version without flash, but they do. Very important button. In order to get started, the most important things you need to know are the aspect ratio button, the high resolution preview button. For me, that's very important. And your camera settings. So up here, you have a few different options. The most important one of these is the one that it's on right now, which is animation. Next to it, you see a little camera icon. If you click on that, it will bring up your camera settings. There's more things in here, but right now, just purely wanna talk about camera settings. And that is over here. So down here, you can manually change anything that your camera is set to. Now, it's not showing anything right now because this camera is disconnected from Dragon Frame because I'm using it to record this video. If my camera were connected though, it would show you the f-stop, it would show you the shutter speed, and it would show you the ISO. Now, I always set them manually on my camera before I connect it to Dragon Frame, and then Dragon Frame will show them here. Currently, I have a very strange glitch 
with Dragon Frame that I keep meaning to look up, but the second that I connect my camera, no matter what I set my shutter speed to, Dragon Frame automatically sets it to one second. Don't know why, but it does every time. And I always have to make sure I come in here and change that down to one two hundredth of a second if I'm using flash. If I'm using continuous lighting, then it's gonna be something else, probably one fiftieth, one sixtieth of a second. But this is where you would change that. This is very important as well, because sometimes you might want to do your test shots in Dragon Frame and see what the exposure is like. And here you can control your camera without going to your camera. So back up here, you've got, this is the animation window. This is the camera window. If you were gonna do anything with any audio, you would click on this one. This would bring up your audio. I will do a whole video on this because you can do some really amazing things with the audio in Dragon Frame. But most of the time you're gonna be working at this frame. All you need in order to get started with Dragon Frame is understanding the frames per second you're shooting at, having your camera tethered to Dragon Frame, knowing how to adjust your camera settings and really knowing what to do down here. I just realized my onion skin was a little bit off. All you really need to know to get started in Dragon Frame is a couple of things. Understanding the aspect ratio crop, understanding the high resolution preview button, understanding the onion skins, and then how to actually play your animation. And there is no button for that here. All we have are options to reverse the playback, loop the playback, various things like that, but there is actually no button for play. In order to play, you hit the space bar and it will play at the frame per second that you set down in this corner here. Like I said, we can change that. So if I, I decide, you know what, um, maybe this is not, not meant to be 12 frames a second, I'll, I'll change this and I'll do custom because six isn't an option. I'll put in six, hit OK, hit play, and now you can see it's a much slower animation. Now it is only playing at six frames a second as opposed to 12. And you say, oh, I don't really like that. You just go back over here, you say it does need to be 12, put it back at 12, hit play, and it plays at 12 frames a second. There's a whole lot of other options over here. Again, these are things I'm gonna cover in more detail in videos in the future because there are a lot of really amazing things you can do with Dragon Frame that they just really don't tell you about. But if you wanted to get started making a stop motion with Dragon Frame today, this is all you need to know. Your frames per second, how to look at the aspect ratio crop, high resolution previews, how to control the camera, off you go. Now. If you're not on a Mac, you can also bring up the keypad. So the keypad is quite handy. Now, the reason why I say if you don't have a Mac, because it is set up in a number, number pad format. All these buttons are the buttons on the number pad. I can still use these on my Mac, but if you're on a PC with a normal keyboard that has a keypad, the keypad is actually quite handy. Over here, you do have the button for play, which is the number zero. But what's important over here is this button. So if you have the keypad up, you would just hit enter on the number pad to shoot. If you don't have a keypad, it is still just enter or return on your keyboard to take the shot. So that's it, you, you take the shots, you toggle back and forth with the arrow keys to look at the images you've taken, you hit spacebar to play. If you want to delete something, Dragon Frame is very protective over you deleting something and it will make sure you want to delete that because once it's gone, it's gone. You have hit delete, you'll see it pops up, tap key again to delete. You have to hit it quite quick to delete because you've noticed it's gone already. It only wants you to delete something if you really, really, really want to delete something which is very useful because you don't wanna accidentally delete a frame from Dragon Frame. Now, the one downside to the way that it works though is you, there is no way, at least that I have figured out, to delete a frame from somewhere within the stop motion. Currently, I can only figure out how to delete frames that I have just shot. I can't figure out how to make it to let me delete one I've shot previously, but that doesn't happen very often. Um, so yeah, that's all you need to get started shooting stop motions with Dragon Frame. 
I'm going to do a lot more in-depth videos on some of the features within Dragonframe because all of them deserve their own video. They're way too in-depth to try to cram into this video. So come back. I will have more videos on Dragonframe for you soon. Again, I stream over on Twitch. I stream my shoots, my stop motion shoots, and my editing. So check it out. You can find me here on Twitch. And yeah, if you haven't already, give the video a like, subscribe, and I'll see you later.